It is a project like the EQXX. Some of it will continue to production. That's a start of a story we will tell that will eventually end in an electric race sports car. Welcome on my backyard. Well, this is your backyard because this is your design studio. Well, it's not technically on my design studio. It's a Mercedes design <laughs> studio, but I'm in charge of it, yeah. It's where we are. Is this the area that you roll out the cars to see them in the sun the first time? Exactly. We are sitting right on the turntable, you see? That's the turntable here. So we put the cars here and look at them in beautiful California sunlight. The only problem is they're looking so good in such beautiful light that it's they look actually worse when we bring them to Germany. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we call in this country rich man's problems. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Speaking of rich man's problems, you have come up with a reinterpretation of something from 1970 that was pretty special. Mm -hmm. What was the impetus to re I mean, maybe redo is the wrong term there to reimagine the C111, which was a concept car back in the day? Well, the original intent or strategy is that we look at icons and in order to do iconic design, because to me, it is really, that makes a difference between some kind of mainstream design and special iconic luxury design. And we at Mercedes, we have such great heritage with cars like um, the C111 from 1970s, 50 years ago. It was 1969 revealed, so the car is one year younger than I am. <laughs> <laughs> so, but that's a great thing at Mercedes. We have such a great heritage. And that was kind of a UFO car back yeah. these days in these times. And, um, and we take up, you know, we pick up on that radical inspiration and of course to create something completely new, as radical for this time as it was back these days. We, we are not doing retro design that we just take the thing and, you know, do it again here, which would be nice too, but that's not our approach. Okay, so let's not drive past the original car, because that was more than just a concept car. That was a test bed for different propulsion systems, started as a rotary and then turned into different versions mm. of diesel. This mm -hmm. one from what And the V8 too, yeah. And the V8. <laughs> there was, what was, 16 different versions uh, of that 17. car? 17s. And I think there's something like 11 or 12 still alive, yeah. And those were, those were actual cars that could be driven at high speed. Yeah. This, is it just to be envisioned as EV or is, it, is there going to be more than just EV? No, it's just supposed to be EV with that new um, type of motor we are presenting here as well. The, what we call the Yaza motor. It's some kind of aerial flux motor or some kind of So I should space not ask the designer about the motor? No, don't talk to me about the motor. <laughs> I, I do the design, but not the motor. But so you the just motor, put a very pretty carrying case over The it. motor offers uh, great design freedom as it's almost like a disc sitting right on the wheel. So it literally doesn't take, you know, the space in the hood like a conventional car. So you will see that allows it that the car is radically flat. So it's actually the wheels are almost higher than the body and that creates that spectacular proportion. Now, perhaps a question you can't really answer, because I could already hear the, we don't talk about future product, but is there anything from this that would live in a future product, kind of like we talked about the EQXX last year, mm -hmm. not a future product, but some of it will live in a future product? It is a project like the EQXX, um, as um, some of it will continue to production. Um, like uh, the technology from the engines, for instance. So you, we, that's a start of a story we will tell that will eventually end in an electric race sports car. So not just production? Production. If I'm reading car. the tea leaf, tea leaf, Race and production or just production? Uh, production, yeah. Okay. Well, well, both maybe. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell too much. <laughs> but Never let them see you coming. All I'm saying is the story continues. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now let's switch gears a little bit because you're talking about EV and some of the stuff that uh, we've seen from a couple of years ago has now become reality. And you're at an unusual point at Mercedes because you've been you've been at Mercedes for how long now? This year it's going to be 26 years. So I had my 25th uh, anniversary. Uh, 15 years uh, as head of design. So I think I'm the uh, longest uh, head of design on duty for a car company now, yeah. Makes me feel old. Well, okay, let's go back a little bit. <laughs> Bruno Sacco, mm -hmm. who designed the, the 1990 SL, but also the C111. 
How old was he when he did that car? Uh, I don't remember. Um, all I'm knowing is that I was with 39 years of age, I got the job, so I was the youngest head of design ever, yeah. That's quite a story. You've been here for the majority of your career, hmm. and you're at this pivot point where you've created two different design languages at one car company. I don't know really anyone else has done that, where you've got the ICE cars, which traditional Mercedes-Benz, then you created this whole other line with EQ, Mm -hmm. And now you're starting to blend that. How does that go? What, what's going on there? Well, it's a matter of time. Right now we are in the tra transition phase between electric cars and uh, combustion cars. So right now we have both, therefore we, we choose different languages, like you said, for electric versus combustion. Now, and this is what this workshop is about, uh, we focus more on iconic, on iconic product characters, um, that stand out and create our reputation as a luxury brand. So it doesn't really matter so much whether they are electric or combustion. So that's kind of, yeah, the zipper starts to close again, let's say, yeah. So let's be specific about this. There are different design attributes or aspects that make up an ICE design or an EV design. Give me like three examples of each you'd want to see go forward in this what you're calling iconic design language, no matter the propulsion system. First of all, we are using a very clean language. Um, so if we like it, we take a line off. If we still like it, take another line off. Um, so you see, especially on the EV cars, we treat them even more clean, which makes them look tech. So no lines, um, clean surfaces, full surfaces that look techy, but also at the same time look very powerful and, and even sexy. The, um, intersections between these surfaces, for instance. So, um, and then of course we combine it with details like graphics that look very, very tech-like, the headlamps, or when you see on the 111, a very product graphic front and rear inspired by the original one. And we use it as a, a kind of a display wall yeah, with all little LEDs inside, yeah. If we look at the EVs, specifically the EQ designs, uh, a lot of that, I think your engineers would agree, have been the design has been very much shaped by efficiency, meaning you need to make the, the, the wind go around the car more efficiently. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What are some challenges that you face, head of design, in, okay, we want the car to be more efficient going through the wind, but I'm still looking for some aesthetics. Is there an example where you've had a, a, an inner battle inside the company that you had to change something? Well, um, just look at the difference between an EQS and an S-Class. S-Class is traditional combustion car, three box limousine, long hood, so what you know. So when we started the electric architecture uh, for the electric S-Class, EQS, and like on every electric car, it's, it's a big matter of how much the rear tapers in. So for aerodynamic, it's actually good when the, when the rear tapers in, so it's pretty narrow. We don't want that because it doesn't look good when the, when the rear is too narrow. So there's a certain width we accept, but not more than that. So we said, OK, stop here. And then speaking of design on the inside, I've always been fascinated by this. We saw the W223S class, what, in 2021 or something like that. Mm -hmm. And you had the two screens. But then very quickly thereafter, we saw the EQS with the hyper screen. Were they developed at the same time or was one an evolution of the other? It, it refers back to the old principle, the difference between an EQS and an S-Class. We saw, obviously, the EQS as a more progressive car, also for possibly new customers. I mean, we pretty much own the S-Class segment with the mm. customers we have today. So when we did the EQS, we didn't want to do just another electric S-Class that looks the same. We wanted to do something different, you mm. know, the purpose design we talked about earlier. and. Um, and also for new customers, customers that are more tech savvy and uh, you know more responsible and whatsoever. Um, so maybe customers who don't drive an S-Class today, but then uh, the EQS could appeal to that type of customer as it's responsible, electric, futuristic, and digital, of course. And that was why we invented that um, super progressive screen mm. cockpit in the EQS, but not in the S-Class to keep it a bit more traditional for mm. the customer of today, pretty much, yeah. So I noticed something with this C111. It's like 10 evolutions beyond what we're talking about, where it's, it still has the digital screen, 
but it looks like you've integrated some hard points back in the design, like the side of the screen's got that knob and then there's something over here with a knob, and then you still have a digital screen. Was there a debate when you were doing the hyper screen on how many knobs or buttons do we put in the car and are you trying to put some back in or continue with just the screens? First of all, also a digital screen, but we kept it a bit more pixelated, like, um, like an 80s um, video game. You're showing it's, your age there. Yeah, it's pretty <laughs> cool. Yeah, I love it, you know, like Pac-Man or yeah. something. <laughs> um, but then, you see, we added that virtual reality experience to it with the VR goggles and create a complete new yeah. immersive experience with taking our zero layer, what you have today in a car like an EQS, and now that became an industry standard, so it got actually adopted by the competition. And with this one, we show that we, with this, we go the next level, so we make it three-dimensional or even immersive with a VR mixed experience, mm -hmm. what you experience in the Vision 111. And therefore, that allowed us to keep the IP a bit more pixelated because mm. you get this super 3D, um, high-tech experience mm. through your goggles. Okay, so you have never been on the show before, uh, and we tie these episodes up a bit differently than other shows, where I like to turn the show around to the audience and look for their feedback mm -hmm. on what they want to see now, the reality is you are the boss, man. You, you control design for Mercedes-Benz. Granted, it's a whole group, but it's your vision. Mm -hmm. So if you were to look at the audience here that's been seeing your cars on my show for 14 years, what feedback do you want from them for product going forward? I mean, first of all, I want them to say, wow, this is one of the most spectacular, most beautiful cars I've ever seen. It's progressive, it's beautiful, it's sexy, and it is a Mercedes because it is a luxury car. They're that gonna has tell presence. you to build it. That's the feedback they want to give yeah, you. Yeah, they, they want it in brown, that, they and want I a diesel pass engine. It on always to the board saying, <laughs> look, the people want to build it. Why why don't you build it? So <laughs> let's see, let's see about that. I mean, we also talk about the Muto series, so we will actually start building Mutos cars in small numbers, yeah. So these are, so share a little bit about what that is. I mean, that's an individual manufacturer kind of a thing. Yeah, almost. Yeah, we have to manufacture so you can uh, customize your, your Maybach or your S-Class. So that's a different story. Mutos is a series of a very limited number of cars. Let's see, uh, say a few hundred or so maybe. We have not um, announced the number yet. And... Um, can be some sports cars or so that carry the mutos of Mercedes. Yeah. Would this be a separate bespoke car or a, a customized version of an existing car? No, that would be a completely new car. So yeah. we could see a Vision 111 come out as a C111. Possibly. I'm not saying we are doing your cars that, but, to the vest. but um, theoretically there is this um, possibility. Okay. Mm. okay, so if I'm translating correctly, the feedback that you are looking for is, what are aspects that would make someone look at a Mercedes and say, wow, that's a Mercedes, or stands out from love, or being iconic design, or some of the other points you discussed, correct? Correct. Okay, so you heard the man, and this is the boss <laughs> of Mercedes design. There is no one higher than him, well, except for Carl and Gottlieb, if they were still around. Well, and uh, Ola, OCO. <laughs> Ola, yeah. Well, he's the big, big boss. We'll get yeah. to him next. Yeah. Uh, let us know in the comments below or via our social media, Motoman TV All Word, Motoman TV All Word, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And if you got value out of this episode, I would greatly appreciate you sharing them with all your friends on your socials. Until I see you in the next, actually, Gordon and I see you in the next episode. And hopefully, that's inside the Motoman studio where we talk about your career. Bis später.